Let's talk about diabetes, okay? The sad thing is there's like 95 million people struggling with diabetes all over the world. In the US, it's 25 million and mostly it's type 2 diabetes. And uh, when you say uh, diabetes, uh, the body lost its capacity um, to use food um, as energy. Yes, we are eating. Yes, uh, we are producing glucose. It's just that we are not using glucose for energy. Why is that? It is a disease of the pancreas. Type 1 diabetes is either your, your, your pancreas lost its ability to produce insulin or it's already producing um, not a whole lot of insulin. This is the one that's autoimmune. There is destruction of the beta cells of the pancreas. Usually it's also called um, juvenile onset because they're more common in younger people, children sometimes. And um, this is the one you will see them that uh, uses insulin injection, but it's type one. Type two, it could be that the in the pancreas is secreting um, insulin, but the insulin is like a key that opens the gate, okay? So um, our cells, the, the, the body has the key. It's just that the cells doesn't open the gate. So we have insulin, but um, the cells are not able to use that, that insulin. We call it insulin resistance, and it's called type 2. This is more common in people that are older, 40 years old and above, and they're the ones that are um, overweight. When you say overweight, it's about 20% heavier than their ideal um, the body weight. And they're the ones that are on oral uh, medication. And this is the one that's usually associated with lifestyle problems, like you also have high blood pressure, you're smoking, you're drinking um, alcohol. So again, insulin is a hormone that is secreted by the pancreas whose function is to allow the glucose to enter the cell so that we can use it for energy. And so without that insulin, the glucose is being stuck in the bloodstream. We call it hyperglycemia. There's lots of blood sugar just swimming around floating in your bloodstream. This is dangerous though because sugar attracts other cells like say platelets macrophages and so when it, when it attracts these cells and other inflammatory cells and let's say cholesterol for example triglycerides it creates a plop that clogs your blood vessels especially the small vessels we call it microvascular circulation so let's say um this uh, plop formation um, hinders affects the the blood supply of your retina. So you will uh, see patient complaining of blurry vision, cataract, um, glaucoma. Let's see if this sugar develops or, or, or clogs up your um, coronary artery, arteries in your heart, then uh, the, pre, the patient will present with um, coronary artery disease, you know, chest pain, shortness of breathing, maybe heart attack. That's why uh, if you are a diabetic, you're also prone to um, heart attack or myocardial um, infarction or, or ischemia. You know, there, there will be literally low blood supply to your um, myocardium or heart tissue. And in the end, you will have a, a heart attack mani manifested as severe um, chest pain and eventually um, death. How about if all the, the vessel of the brain is affected? You will be prone to stroke. So stroke, hypertension, heart attack, cataract formation in the eyes. How about if the blood vessel of the kidneys are affected? I'm pretty sure that you have witnessed a lot of diabetic patients whose blood sugar is um, mismanaged, not eating the right food, not compliant with their medicine, and now they are on dialysis. Or what about if the blood sugar deposits in the blood vessels in the lower extremities. You have seen uh, patients who have been amputated because of diabetic neuropathy. You see, um, it's the microcirculation, the small blood vessels that also supplies the nerves in, in, you know, in, in the foot, in the lower extremities. And so without enough blood supply to our nerves, they develop tingling sensation. They lose the pulse or the sensation in the lower extremities. and they develop like ulcer or, or wound or non-healing wound.
And so what are the symptoms of diabetes? Again, because sugar attracts um, water, it becomes, it makes our blood thicker. Uh, patients are always hungry. Why are they always hungry? Um, because you're eating, but actually you're not creating energy out of the food that you ate. That's why um, they, they are always hungry, they're always thirsty, and they're always urinating. You know, they go to the uh, bathroom back and forth because they're, uh, they're losing a lot of fluid through the urine. And so if you are peeing a lot, of course, you also get thirsty. And uh, they, they have weight loss. Although they are eating a lot, they have um, weight loss as well. And I already mentioned that you have frequent urinary tract infection or a frequent uh, yeast infection or sometimes vaginal um, itchiness. And then we you know when you check your blood sugar, it's actually um, elevated because again, when you are diabetic, um, your immune system is also compromised. That's why you have frequent urination or non-healing um, wound. So practical measures that we can do. You see, all these complications can be um, prevented or we can manage all these uh, possible complications if we're only meticulous with the control of our blood sugar. And the three basic things that we can do is um, eating the right food, um, frequent checking of our blood sugar, and uh, exercise. Those are three. Oh, by the way, how do you define or how do you diagnose diabetes? Uh, we use um, the most common is, you know, that uh, we let the patient fast for 8 to 12 hours and check the fasting blood sugar. If it is 126 milligrams per DL or higher, then you are diagnosed with diabetes. Um, normally, it should be less than 100 milligrams per DL. So 100 to 125 milligrams per DL, I'm talking about fasting blood sugar, we call it pre-diabetes. Um, uh, we can also check your random blood sugar. If it is uh, more than 200 at two different occasions, then it's also um, points to diabetes. And we also check your hemoglobin A1C or your glycated hemoglobin. Again, remember we said that the blood sugar is just there being stuck in your bloodstream. A1C is the control of your blood sugar in the last three months. Normally, it's uh, less than 5.7. If it's um, greater than 6.5 at two different occasions, it's very diagnostic of um, diabetes. I want to also emphasize that um, as we grow older, we are prone to developing uh, diabetes. Also, ethnicity has a factor, like say, African American, Hispanic, Native American, Asian American are um, prone to developing um, diabetes. Of course, if you have a family history of diabetes, you're also prone to developing one. Smoking, alcohol, um, diet, um, being obese, if you have high cholesterol, high triglyceride, if you have hypertension, if you have a history of gestational diabetes, meaning to say that in your previous pregnancy, your blood sugar was uh, high, and then after delivering the baby, usually your blood sugar goes back to normal, but you are prone to actually developing um, diabetes after that. Again, just being pregnant because of the hormones of pregnancy, you're also prone to developing diabetes. Use of steroid like your prednisone can also uh, trigger diabetes. Even the antihypertensive medication that we take, some of them, the side effect is um, increased um, blood um, sugar. Practical things that we can do is lifestyle change. Like say with diet, um, you choose um, fresh, colorful vegetable that has low glycemic index. Example of this is broccoli, cauliflower, uh, brussels, um, spinach, for example, kale. If you are choosing fruit, melon is a good choice and strawberry because they only have a low amount of, of carbohydrate. With regards to fish, um, salmon is really good. For fat, healthy choices are olive oil and avocado oil. And again, exercise. Exercise is beneficial because you will uh, literally increase the sensitivity of uh, peripheral receptors. It's almost like 
with exercise, you are making the cells very sensitive to the effect of insulin so that the gates that uh, allow this insulin to enter the cell, that allow the glucose to enter the cells are activated. And again, oxygen uh, that is being released during uh, exercise into the peripheral tissues um, triggers the release of 38 adenosine triphosphate um, that increases our energy, that allows us to fight infection. It creates a fuel so that our cells can function better. So thank you guys. I hope this video on diabetes um, helps you. And I just want to uh, say a prayer for those viewers that are struggling with it. Uh, Father, I just uh, leave up to you all those um, brothers and sisters that are struggling with diabetes, that they experience your, your love and healing touch. I just pray that you will heal their pancreas, especially the beta cells, to produce insulin or uh, make all the peripheral cells to be sensitive um, to the to insulin that allows glucose to enter the cells mixed with oxygen, the ruwah, the breath of God, um, so that uh, our brothers and sister, sisters will be creating um, the maximum energy, 36 to 38 ATP per molecule of glucose. I also uh, pray that you will strengthen all the blood vessels supplying the eyes, the heart, the brain, the kidneys, all the microvascular uh, circulation in the lower extremities and put the hedge of protection over these areas where um, complications happen in, in, in diabetes. And I pray for uh, just the self-control to, to make healthy choices and to um, practice a um, healthy lifestyle because sometimes it, it uh, entails or we need the grace of God to, to, um, to have self-control, not to eat that um, ice cream or <laughs> cheesecake which can elevate your blood sugar um, right away and also break the curse of diabetes in every DNA Lord um, that you will heal it no more genetic mutation oh God so Lord thank you that even right now um, blood sugars are being normalized in all our patients in Jesus name amen thank you guys we love you amen